Wow. <laughs> I'm Hello laughing everybody, Tony because... totally but... Sats well here, making mm. a comeback, but he much like the dead people as me too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm laughing because that, in the live, it'll catch you speaking, because when before we put the time on, it came up live. So you know going, what, I'll tell you what, right, I can speak to the dead, but I can't understand the fucking word you're saying. <laughs> in fact, <laughs> in fact, I have a huge point to pick for you, Tony. People are clearer than you are. Uh, <laughs> what you had? Oh dear! Can I have a new hairstyle? Had it done specially? <laughs> we got anybody in the chat? If you'd like to come forward, I'm now a guest host on Simpler Spooky. <laughs> <laughs> There's four of us, there's another 58 people, dead people, waiting beside me. <laughs> or as I like to call them, the IDP, very important, dead people. IDP. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> you just chat amongst yourselves, so I'm sharing this out. Well, I've got 58 so, people uh, to talk to here. I'm not bothered about you lot. Didn't that start yet? Uh, uh, huh. Probably... Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Oh, I don't know. I just don't know what to say. Well, that's not. What about Star? <laughs> Tony, Are you all right, you young Eric? Young <laughs> Tony, Are you all right, you... young Lois? Can you give oh, Eric a all the, all the better for seeing you, Tony, your oh, anchor. Lovely, lovely. <laughs> Can you give Eric a reading? I can't, no, I've not been paid tonight. <laughs> Can you give me a reading? I can't give anybody a reading tonight. I've got what we call, um, it's called, um, what? It's, it's, called uh, it's, it's called spiritual constipation. <laughs> There's a blockage. They're not getting through tonight. And I don't know what's happened. <laughs> I need to get the spiritual X flaps to clear the backlog. Hey, William. Hello, William. young William. How are you doing? <laughs> it's getting I've got exciting. I've got a lovely job on here now, and I'm I'm actually co-hosting. Donald Trump has been arrested. Do you have any uh, premonitions about what's going to be happening to him? Do you have any premonitions about Donald Trump? Uh, no, I don't know coming through. Like I say, I'm spiritually constipated. I'm backed up spiritually, as I like to say. Hi, Paul. Hey, Paul. Hi, Paul. You need to learn that. Do I hold immunity in the UK? You should go to prison. <laughs> yes, Eric. Some people say that about me. But you know what? They've got nothing against hey, me. Hey, Suzanne. Hi, Suzanne. April. Hello, April. How are you? Hello, April. Love, how are you doing? Thanks. Rita says hello, what's, that, Rita, what's that, Rita said? Oh, oh my, my God. what's that? Oh my god. Hello, Rita Love. I can hardly read this with these glasses. <laughs> it's the wrong prescription, to be honest. These glasses and the small writing, because I'm on the phone tonight, you see. Because spirits well, get contain the, silly buggers with the internet. Get the spirits to talk to you, to get them to talk to you, to talk to us. They're ignoring me tonight. <laughs> Why? Because uh someone's here. Robert, Rob's <laughs> no. Someone that hey, here tonight, and I can't say who it is. I cannot say who it is. Just follow me finger. <laughs> <laughs> What's she done? Yeah, that's it, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> that's like, the one. Of course. Wait, yeah, I didn't say that. <laughs> Well, she's she's had lots wrong with her, don't forget. She had to deal yeah. with her crabs and other issues. Oh, yeah, crabs, so, yeah. yeah. Oh, no, no, and that gonorrhea. I know, you're right. Yeah, she is, yeah. Skank, they said, she's still a skank. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you're straight to the hedgehog, Tony. I what? I hope your shit is an ex hedgehog. I'm sorry, love. All I'm getting. <laughs> 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 
Lisa Tony, I hate you. Thanks very much, Phil. Thanks very much. I can't read that one. I can't. Can somebody read them? I can't read them because my eyes. This bitch Ooh. says, says oh, Ooh, crap. I thought you were blind, says Rita. Is it a blind junk, love? Blind junk. <laughs> So, tonight, we are supposed tonight. to be talking about hauntings near oh, us. Yeah. Near us, right. Who wants to go first? Not me. <laughs> <laughs> Lo, do you want to go first? I'll tell you what I don't want to talk about hauntings. I'm fucking sick of dead people. They're hanging around me day and night. I can't get any sleep. Can't have a poo on me own. Can't have a wee on me own. Can't masturbate on me own. Can't do on me own. You try knocking one out with 130 dead people around your bed. It's no, it's very <laughs> off-putting, love. Dan! <laughs> behave yourself. I'll be, I'll be, I'll be Sorry, behave yourself. I'll be behave yourself. So I was talking Who's to your spirit guide you then. speaking of? Oh, that's my uh, my spirit guide. Oh, the good-looking, chubby one. Ah, he's lovely and tick. Spi my spiritual advisor. Yeah, my one's still drunk. Is he? Drunk. Drunk. He's got half a kebab down his shirt as well. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> okay, fine. Oh, look at that! <laughs> she's oh. Just... Now she's going to hide. Look, baby. She's gorgeous. gorgeous. Oh. I think something's... <laughs> David, David, see you've got Eric. <laughs> David Servan says there's nothing wrong with spirit assistance with some of what that Dan, with some of that Dan, spiritual assistance with that Dan. Oh, oh hey Parker, All right, Parker, put that collar down. Hey. Hello, Parker, love. Oh, wasn't it lovely when we went out that romantic dinner the other night, just you and me. <laughs> Just you and me and the big thigh break. You know, well, anyway, I'm not saying no. <laughs> Chantel says, well, hello, lovelies. Hello. hello. Chantel, uh, Chantel how are you doing? Chantel. 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 Hey, Nettie. Hi, Nettie. Hello, Nettie. How are you doing, love? Uh, can you give me a huge beer? Yes, well. I'm and David Servant says, have the grey laid... Have the grey lady lend you a hand? Ha <laughs> ha! Laugh out loud. Mm. There's enough grey ladies on here, I tell you. They're all <laughs> over 70. Uh -huh. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah. It's my core audience 75 year old grey hair ladies. <laughs> they absolutely <laughs> love the bullshit. I mean, the stuff that I come out with. So. Who's going first talking about a haunting near them? You want me to go first? Go on then. Go on, love. Right, the one that I put picked really, I know you wanted me to do a suicidal bridge, but the one that I've really picked is one that I, I'm very at home so with. I can't understand anything. <laughs> Carry on, Lois. Just sit down, great, yeah. <laughs> So, so the one I picked was um, Lennox Castle. Um, <laughs> Lennox Castle was built in the 1830s, um, but it wasn't until a century later that it opened as a hospital for mentally, like mental health. Um, it's it's thrown over many acres. Um, I had 20 safety blocks, um, 60 men and women each. There was about 1,200 people in total. Um, and the castle itself was actually converted into like a nurse's home. Um, when it opened in 1936, it was actually um, heralded as ahead of time and the largest best equipped hospital of its kind in the UK. Um, however, by 1980s, that's when standards started to slip. Um, it, it was to be found that residents were dangerously underweight um, and maturely. And 
The hospital's medical director said in 1986 he'd never worked anywhere in worse than a pit. Um, so it's got a lot of bad history to it. Um, but the, as I've always felt at home there, because honestly, the atmosphere of day... <laughs> Hi, that's why. Um, because, like, obviously the atmosphere from day to night... If a person had to tell me, like, where's the most electrifying where you found the energy, I would say it was Glenlock's Castle because the whole atmosphere gone into day and the nights, two yeah. total feeling, different feelings. It's like when you got up during the day, it's very peaceful and it's very, you're relaxed, but when that starts to fall, you feel like there's like a load of patience. Go work, walking in pure circles around you. Um, and what I've always mentioned was like my friend, um, who, <laughs> who never ever gets scared during anything, never ever jumps anything. Um, when we went to investigate, um, there was a bit like a good distance between me and him. Um, and he literally heard someone like sign we could actually hear it and record it in camera and he actually jumped and he was freaking out and he never freaks out in an investigation and the whole time I've known him I've, he doesn't freak out about anything and that's the first time I've ever seen him like get frightened and you know we asked each other but we sighing was it thing we but no this was quite a loud sigh um so and he said it was right in his ear, um. So wow. that it's a really, it's a really interesting one. That was, I must admit, that's right up there with me for when it comes to hauntings. It's, and I mean, I've had experiences up there myself that I can't even explain. Um, the one that, I know I'm when I do lives, I'm usually dead, prim and proper on my lives. So I won't, um, won't swear anything like that. I'm doing like investigation lives. Um, and like there was me, Robbie and Scott and we were investigating near this window part of the hospital and we heard what sounded like a scream like a literal scream but it was far away so first of all we put it down to animals maybe it's animals then we heard the second scream and it was a lot closer yes. <laughs> the okay. scream this the scream was a lot closer, and that you couldn't debunk. But then the third scream came even more closer, and that uh, yeah, actually hear me saying on the live, "What the f actual fuck?" Because of the scream, so, so I it's, it's quite a point. Does that place scare you though, Lois? Is it? Is it made you a bit unnerved going there? It it does it does. I like it until a certain point. But see when, and I mean, where you're going, where this hospital is situated is, it's up a big massive hill, and you've got quite a distance to walk to get to it. Um, it, it comes to a certain point because there's no street lights up there or anything like that to illuminate it. It's pure darkness. And I yeah. think the more darker it gets and the more intense the energy, like, uh, you need my hodge for this one. But when the, when the energy intensifies, yeah, that's the more scary it gets. And usually, I'm great in investigations, but I wouldn't want to go up there myself. And you don't know what they've done in that hospital to people with ele electric shock treatments and lobotomies and God knows what mm -hmm. else. Have you? Is there any reports of, of finding <laughs> skeletons buried on? Uh, you know where people have died. The patients were they buried on site or? Is there a no that, no that I've heard it. Um, there was there's there's one case that um, that where people were talking about <coughs> getting hit and things like that, but nothing. I haven't actually. That's something I would actually need to really research to see if there's anything um like that that's happened. Um, but it does make you wonder, like how bad things were actually in there. I think, though, like 
one time when we were, I was doing an experiment, I had picked up on a um, doctor being flung over the, like, cause obviously like the high banister getting flung right over by a patient. Wow. So if you, quite, any, if you dig up any skeletons, any skulls or anything, remember Dan's in the market for one. He knows how much. It's <laughs> <laughs> so expensive. Uh, definitely. Definitely. Before we go any further, can we just do the song Chantel's in the House, please? Chantel's in the House on Tuesday afternoon and in whatever. We had to do it, Chantel. <laughs> uh, Nettie wants to know where's the sexy gone? I'm still here. Oh, he's gone to get pissed. Parker's still here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's not how you spell stupid. <laughs> Did you hear about the demon that got arrested? He got caught on possession. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh God! Wow! Oh, oh well. <laughs> so, has anybody got any questions for for Lois about um, her scary place? It just sounds amazing. We're coming, yeah. we're going, we're going, Dan. It does sound interesting. I'll we're put the pictures up. up. I'll put my pictures up for you. Did you like what I Last year. In fact, it'll be like either the last year or the year before I went to Leonard's Castle. I fucking love it up there. Honest to God, man. Honestly. It's God, it's in a day, is it lovely? Uh, it's dead like a calm, peaceful atmosphere. And it's just, as I said, as soon as it gets to that point, then that's it's when the, the energy changes. And I've never, like, I can never say in the whole time in investigating that I've ever found that. In another place, the way I find it in this place. It's interesting. Very interesting. Anybody else got any questions? Yeah, are these about personal um, experiences, mm -hmm. like local? Are these about... Um, Whatever, near you. Local ones. Yeah. Well, I mean, the, the famous one near me, I mean, the, the, the famous one near me is the Enfield haunting, because I was born and brought up in Enfield. Oh, so, I during the... <laughs> yeah, during the 70s, that was like literally up the road around the corner from where I lived. Really? So there was a lot of stuff going on there. Um, you know, I think my mum knew the lady who had the house at the time, and oh, he's going back to the 70s. He's going back a long, long way back now. But that's the that's the most um, that's the most probably one of the most globally famous ones I would imagine. Do you have any snippets or anything about the Enfield haunting that that wasn't put out? If you like in in the public domain or on the films or whatever they've portrayed. Yes, I, I do, I do. Um, a friend of mine who was a police officer at the time, he he wasn't a police... Well, I say he was a police officer at the time. He was a police officer a couple of years later. But he was at Enfield. It was Metropolitan Police. And he joined up. And as he was joining up, the couple of the ones... or well, there was a woman there, and she was someone that's come to the end of her career on the at the Met. And she was the woman that actually... She attended the... Uh, of the property one evening when there was activity going on there because they didn't know what to do. They got so irate and panicky that in the end, the only option they had to phone the police. But yeah. obviously it's way beyond the police's ability to deal with it. And of course they turned out thinking, here we go. It's going to be X, Y, and Z. It's going to be nothing. It's going to be nothing. And um, she said, then she walked in there, the chair went flying across the room at mm. them. Um, and she said that there was, um, there was stuff that was moving around the room in the air. It was just spinning around in the air in the middle of them. And then it was diving all over the place and it was stuff being thrown at them. And in the end, they were kind of forced out. Um, yeah. And she, he said she told him that that, that that was the actuality, what happened, that there was definitely a haunt in there. And the, the, the police, it was beyond their capabilities. So that's obviously when they got um, Playfair and uh, um, what's his name? Nice. Um, Morris Grossing, yeah. Yeah, when my got favorite. Those in. Um, and there was stuff like that. I remember the, I remember going around there as like a school kid because I had friends that lived just like on the same area that they lived on the same estate. And there was, you know, there was, there wasn't, there was cameras and stuff, but this was coming to the, this was near the end of it when they come to the conclusion because obviously while it was going on, nobody really, 
it was just a small circle of people that knew. But as it was coming to the end of it, and they were sort of profiling it, then it got out and everybody was there. I think there used to be something called Nationwide, which I don't know if you remember yes. that. In the, I do, they were yeah. There. Um, the, I don't know, remember the it. Then, and not that old. They were there. Um, <laughs> who else was it? The the, um, the yeah it, the what's it, the Warrens turned up, didn't they? And were told to nap off. I don't think they turned up, Viv. I think that was all fabrication. Do you think? Yeah, no, yeah. I think it was fabrication. I don't think they actually went. I don't think they went. There. I don't think they had anything to do with it. I think this is Hollywood. Hollywood have got hold of it and thought, oh, we'll stick the Warrens in there, you know, like they do. Mm. But I don't, not, I mean, I might be wrong, but I don't ever re recollect anything like that. And that seems to be something yeah. that's been added on the last few years since the film came out. Um, I never never heard of that before the film. Yeah. Um, but there was that. But Enfield's got, I mean, Enfield's, I mean, like that, I experienced stuff growing up that was, you know, that, that was, um, you know, spirits and activity. So I'd experienced stuff growing up in Enfield. And, I mean, Enfield's ancient. I like, I like it all is, but it was the old... Enfield was the home of the Royal Hunting Lodges and it was the home yeah. of, the, you know, mm -hmm. the, the Royal Enfield Chase with the kid... Like, with and the, the motorbikes. And yeah, yeah. And they used to go up and down there and, the, you know, um, where I used to go, where I used to work, there, there was a field there. It was nothing now. But it was like a, there's like a war memorial on it. But go back 500 years, that was part... Of the hunting uh, chase for the royal family. So it was like yeah. Queen Elizabeth I and all that lot would go there hunting, King Henry VIII and all that. But, um, yeah, it, it was, there was one, the one that, the one I, the, I don't know, one of the ones that stuck with me, I always had this dream that if I wanted to do an invest, if I was going to do a proper investigation, I wanted to find somewhere where we could do at least throughout a year. And mm. I wanted to get like, a couple of different teams on it, like 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 the same team, but a couple of different groups from that team on it, so that you could judge it over the course of a year. So you could see things, activity that people that thought was activity, you could work out due to the seasons. It'd be something to do with the seasons, so that'd be environmental. So, for example, there was a girl who came back there one night, and she said it was an old chapel, and she said, "Oh, the thing is, Dan, she went." She said there was this strong smell of musty books there, and there was this smell of like um, frankincense. And I said, "Oh, okay. oh yeah, <laughs> okay, okay." <clears throat> but the chapel's gone. Oh right, okay. There's still, there's, still, there's still a couple of walls there, but there's nothing. There's nothing that is a structure. Nothing really structural anymore, apart from a couple of walls. So it's more like a um, folly, really now. But if it's but, like over years of, of, of lighting frankincense and if it gets a bit damp, surely that would that release... That was it. That was it. It rained, it rained and, it, it, and I picked the grass up and smelled the earth and I said, well, what's happened is you've had centuries of... And of course it was it was, um, it was was a travelling area for pilgrims. So that was very well known. There was lots of stuff going on there. I mean, I went there at different times of the day because a lot of people had seen shadows move there. So I thought, go through different seasons... And sure, as eggs is eggs, there were certain parts of certain seasons the shadows would come through, but it was just natural environmental stuff. Yeah. yeah. There was one that we couldn't yeah. debunk, though, and it was a cloaked shadow, and this thing was in the summer, and it was a dry, bright day, and this thing just went over, and it cloaked us. It just completely cloaked us, and everywhere went pitch dark. And only yeah. three of us saw it out of about seven people. Three of us saw it. And there was a, we did an investigation there. And um, my idea was to, where the activity was, which was generally up by the altar, where what there is now, there's like a hill there. Like a hill, they, they've just turfed the area up. And there's a, like a mound there to sort of put people off. This is in the middle of a farmer's field, in the middle of nowhere. You wouldn't even know it was there. And so my idea was to get a camera and put it behind us and just continue filming while the three of us stood there on the top of this hill. So anyone anyway, on top of the hill, this the girl on my right said, oh, I'm getting really cold now, and there's a smell. And she said, it's not a particularly nice smell. And I said, well, I'm not picking anything up. And then literally a second or a couple of seconds later, I said, oh, hang on, it's got cold here now. And she went, well, I'm warm now. I said, well, it's freezing cold here, and I've got this smell. Then a little while later, the guy next to me picked it up, and then it came back again. And so we got it alternately. But then when we look back on the camera... 
you could see, and it was an infrared, that there was a mist moving around by her, about the height of a person, but it was like a, like a, like a whirlwind type thing. <coughs> and then it moved from her, and she went, I'm warm now. And I went, hang on, I'm freezing to me. And then I went, oh, I can smell it. It's right, like it's right here. And then it moved from me to the other guy, and I warmed up, and he went, oh, I'm freezing now. And then it was in front of him. Then it left him and came back to me. So we had that as a verification. Yeah. So there was good. lots and lots of stuff that went on there. But there was nothing that was frightening there. No. Nothing right. that was horrible. There was Dan, lovely. we got some comments in the chat. We'll get them done first. So, yeah, you got to read them. I can't. Kelly, Kelly says, location the old oak tree Orton Towers is extremely haunted and it's got chains on it, Viv and Dan. Yeah, I know the haunted. It falls, I know it's a witch, isn't it? I know the haunted location at Orton Towers that's been reported there for years, and it's not there, and it's not anywhere that people claim to be in Orton Towers. It's called mm. the Chinese Garden. If you go to the Chinese Garden, that's the place that's really haunted. Reported is, it, is it to do with the trees to do with the witches or something? I don't know. They've got it. They've got it. Um, it was cursed or something, wasn't it? I don't know, some old fable, but yeah. South Africa only has one place that is really well known that everyone investigates called Kempton Park Hospital. Do you know, it's funny you say that, Chantel, because Kempton Park over here is a horse, famous horse uh, track, and I'm sure that they have their own little horsey hospital in there. So isn't that weird? Synchronicity mm. right there. Why would anybody investigate a sanatorium? What kind of response would you get? I think I because I think because well you've got to remember is there's a lot of people that have been in these places and it doesn't matter whether it's a sanatorium, church, a graveyard, castle or wherever and they might feel like they want to talk to somebody and they're trapped. So I, history. I, I, history, I, 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 uh huh, and I go in. When I get into these places, I always, and a lot of people, I've been mocked in the past for this. Um, but I think it's only polite when you get into places that you introduce yourself. Yeah. You so I introduce myself. I introduce myself to the spirits in uh, the sanatorium. Um, I, I explain why I'm there. I explain that I'm not there to cause any harm. I just want to know them. Um, and the responses that you get, believe it or not, are, are actually really good. I don't think I've ever actually had a bad response. Yeah. I think there is more curiosity to who I am and what I'm all about. <coughs> right, Kelly says, let Viv and Dan, when, come out, when you can we come over, we'll get together and we'll let you know, Kelly, as soon as we Definitely, can. Definitely, Kelly. We, we keep meaning to do it. Very, very the hours of Monday morning, I heard somebody <coughs> whistling, <coughs> and I wake up and there's nobody there, Dan. Oh, she also be in my house just lately. <laughs> <laughs> Chantel says... Myself. Yeah, sorry. Sorry, I'll just read it because you can't read it, Dan. No, there's I'm also not. a place... I have been myself that everybody goes and tries. It's a place you park your car at the bottom of the hill and take off the handbrake and mm. it rolls up the hill. It's just an optical illusion, but it's still pretty cool. Well, what were you talking about today, Dan? Well, talking That's about like Hangman that, Hill. Yeah. Watched an episode on TV about that too today. They're talking about it's um, what is it called? It's, it's two hills together, <laughs> isn't it? It's two hills, but you only see one. Yep. There's yeah. that one in America, Eric. That's the one. There's, yeah, there's, one, one, by, there's one by a railroad track, isn't it? That keeps yeah. them to put it across the. And they sell his little fingerprints, little handprints on the glass, yeah. don't they? That's yeah. what I was watching today. Like, apparently, there's several of them here. Wow. Kinky Frank Bruff. <laughs> Are they nationwide? <laughs> 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 uh, 
Has anyone seen a full apparition? I have yeah. photos. Well, I'll talk you to mine about it in a minute. Yeah, I've seen them. Okay, cool, Dan. I've seen them stuff along. Okay, cool, Viv. Uh, from a sanatorium, it would be full of sick individuals, not necessarily. They not always. Now they're passed over. Hi, Sarah. Hey, Sarah. Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Bobby says, oh, myself, a few others were granted access to closed Mid Hudson Psych Centre years ago. Oh, that's interesting. Wow. It's like yours, Lois. That sounded Bobby. sounded yep. big as well. Hi, Dave. Hey, Dave. Hi, Dave. Hi, Dave. <clears throat> and David Servan says, I would assume the activity from a sanatorium would be a bit more on the sad, desperate side, whereas a sanatorium, the energy would feel a bit more frantic, scattered, more highly. Yes. That is exactly it, David, in a nutshell, that is the only way to describe it, honey. So, Eric, what is your favourite, your place near you? My favourite? Well, I haven't or, been. Your haunted place is near you. And Nick is going to be going there, and I'm going to probably be taking him, because he needs a ride there. It's, uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's where? Ohio State Penitentiary. Oh, that's cool. Oh, man, that's that so wow. Oh, so. I'd like to do that one. That is so infamous, that one, isn't it? Yeah, it is. That and so um, Waverly. Waverly State Penitentiary is um, apparently another place near Michigan, I think. Okay. Like, yeah. Have you done it before? Have you been Have you been and investigated it before? It's, um. It's been quite a while since I've been doing investigations, and the only thing I ever did was by myself. And when I lived in the Lion Mark in Wausau, which is about three hours away from here, and we would just get like children running in the hallways, and it's mostly apartments for older people. They don't have kids there, so you get hear sound of kids running and laughing, pictures being turned upside down. That's quite cute. It's weird. Just being buggers, really. Just no. kids, 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 aren't they? <laughs> that sounds quite sweet, actually. <laughs> Would, are you looking? Are you going to be investigating with Nick? Um, yeah, Eric? I'm hoping to. I'm hoping he'll let me because I'm going to be driving him. So <laughs> you've got to pay your no, game, man, ain't he? That'd be good. Are you <laughs> scared? Aren't you, aren't you going to be scared at all? I'd be bloody. No, myself. I don't get scared like that. It, like I said, I would have to literally get like thrown to the ground in order for me to even freak out. So. <laughs> we have um, a Dan and I have a friend that does these really bad places no. um, with naked people. And people invest. It's, it's, it sounds disgusting, but it's not. It's to prove uh, touch. Yeah. And he puts these people in these oh, bad yeah. places, like these penitentiaries, and they're getting attacked. And we see it on film. Mm. Um, really aren't you scared of being attacked? Aren't you scared of being attacked and physically hurt in these places by unseen hands? I'm getting, I'm getting attacked by the dog. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or something like that. <laughs> David said... Um, Ooh, Ohio State is cool. Yeah, I want to go. It does look it. And if you're traveling, Eric, try to go to Penhurst in yep. Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. And Wild Bill is in the house. Whoop, whoop, Hi, Wild Bill. Wild Bill. Wild Bill. Doing well, buddy. Do you know what about Wild Bill? I will. I'll te tell you a secret about Wild Bill. Uh -oh. He's really, he's really wild. <laughs> and, he's, and, I've heard he's called, and I've heard he's called Bill. He is. <laughs> Bobby says he's also trans been to Trans yeah. and Again. That was oh, you've crazy. Been some cool crazy. places, Bobby. And um, yes, that's another place I want to go to. He said that he would be up a room it. and he saw a blob go up a wall to the ceiling, and then it f it f fled out the door. Oh my wow. god! Oh. That, in fact, that reminds me, Bobby, I'll need to message you for dates for the crime show. If you're still interested in coming on, just remember cool. there. And Raga... Hey, Raga. Hello. Oh Hi. So, Jamie, we're bringing hey. it to you, boy. What hauntings do you have near you, or is there a special one that you want to talk about? Uh, and Anne Summers doesn't count. 
<laughs> you don't have to name them if you don't want to necessarily. You need to keep the. <laughs> no, 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 it's, it's not. Quiet. We've got quite a few around where we are. Um, but my fame, the famous one that I've been to. It's got us all on tender hooks there while he's cut he's out. Him, he? he I cut know. Cut out. Let's all take the cunt. What is he thinking? Let's all <laughs> tell me what he's thinking. <laughs> you froze, then you froze. You froze then. Yeah, I gathered. Can you imagine if everybody did that once? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. 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 Thank Think because we've got so many round here, and I've. I haven't been to all of them, but my famous one, <laughs> the famous one that I've been to, is when we uh, when we went on my on the bir- on my my birthday weekend. I think that was quite. That was oh, quite you want to talk about that? You want Winchester to talk about Mansion. Talk, talk, talk about, about it. Then. Talk about it. Yeah, talk so, about it. So, um, it was quite weird because I we've never been. I've never been there, um, but I think have you and oh, Dan I mean, and Viv? You... No, first time I've been there, mate. First time. It's I... first... You've been there. Have you been there twice? <clears throat> so it was quite, um, kind of quite special because it was, it was out in the middle of nowhere, um, and it was like a massive, long, stately road, like path to get to it. But you wouldn't have thought the road was about five miles long, and it was in the valley. Um, and then we actually got there. It was. It was quite foggy and it started, it was really cold that night, wasn't it? Um, and then we got to it and it was just like, fuck, there's something actually like the size of the place, you know, in the middle of the, in the valley. And you just think, how is that still standing? Well, like, all the weather it's had and the stuff. But um, so we finally got in and had a chat and walked around and did what we had to do. But we we started on some investigations, and then um, there was a what was that room, Viv, where we did that investigation? That was the morgue, wasn't it? In the morgue, yeah. Yeah. So we did. I don't know. I, don't know, I can't remember what we did. Was it the I I one with the flashing light? Uh, Gansfield. The Gansfield wasn't it? That's Gansfield, Gansfield. That's it. And then once I finished the Gansfield, there was water under my chair. Um, which we couldn't kind of explain. So that was that kind of... I, did, I did check Jamie's pants, just because <laughs> he pissed himself, but he didn't. I was looking for the wet patches. So Vivian, I could have given you a pad. You put my chair in, in, the, in the doorway, and I was like, no, that's not going to happen. So I moved it a couple of inches that way. So you um, weren't in the morgue? Yeah, so I weren't on, like, physically in it. I, <laughs> I like, remember no, that. No I chance. remember that. <laughs> Um, but then we finished, and then I just had a kite. We had a little puddle where, where my feet were. We that was quite like that chair. Wasn't intriguing. Um, that was quite, we couldn't it kind of explain what went on there. Well, um, I found out since that the people, the, there were some people from the military that were there during the war that drowned in the lake, and their bodies were stored in that morgue. So the wet patch, like pulling the bodies in, Putting them in the morgue, fresh, would explain the wet patch. And mm. we're just trying to talk yeah. to you. Yeah, so that was quite interesting. Um, and then we went down into the cellar. Oh, first we was doing the experiment. Hayley was doing the experiment. And then we was kind of out of the way, weren't we? Um, and me and you, me and Viv heard uh, that talking in the hallway, didn't we? Yeah. Which, that was kind of, it was quite, it was just like, us all up talking to each other kind of thing it was quite clear so that happened and then uh we it was me dan and i can't remember who else went down to the cellar that was quite interesting wasn't it that was i left you i let i left you from the bottom to the stairs because i heard um yeah you were off yeah i i heard something in my ear roll and i was like yeah see you later i'm i'm up them stairs um it was i can't it was kind of like a growling noise wasn't it um, I said, no, I'm not explaining that. I went up, I shot up in stairs. <laughs> and Dan was like, what are you doing? 
<laughs> he's all just leaving. Oh, I just left he him. Yeah, me. I was like, no, I'm not having that. He leaves you there and he runs. And he's yeah, supposed he to be a big, brave, big, brave lad. And yeah. he just leaves you there. I've got some, I had my paranormal pants on that night. Tell me about it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, so then me and Viv decided to go out for a walk. We didn't have no cameras on or whatever as normal. We were going to check on Willie, weren't we? <laughs> we were checking on Willie. Yes, we were. So I'm just going to plug you in. So people that don't know what Willie is, this is Willie. Willie, um, Willie. Uh, we leave him in a secret place and um, we do what we've got to do. We were just checking to see if it had been moved. And then, go on, Jay. Um, yeah, so where the so where Willie was, it was in a um, in a window. In a, yeah, it was where the window frame is, wasn't it? Um, so we decided that we'll go and see him, see if it moved or whatever. And um, then we was out looking... Uh, leaflets, funny enough, seeing what we was going to do on the Saturday, on the Saturday afternoon. Um, and there's been, there's a massive, massive hallway. So we was on the left hand side, like in a little dugout where the stairs goes up. <coughs> um, but previous, we was told that there's a little boy that one goes up and down that hallway. Um, and at the end of the hallway, you've got obviously the doorway. And he's always, he's just travels up and down that hallway and on the other corridor as well. So I'm, I'm talking away to him and said, oh, that'd be nice to go there and we need to plan there or what we're going to do kind of thing. So I've jumped in the air. No, you I didn't. You screamed. Uh, do you want to tell, do you want to tell the story? <laughs> <laughs> he screamed. Right, and then okay, <laughs> so I screamed first like a little kid i jumped up in the air i'm only five foot six i'm not that tall and i must have gone about eight foot up in the air and viv's like jay what's going on started <laughs> laughing and going what's the matter jay what's the matter i said i've just been touched yes i did scream like a bitch by the way that's me because i'm texting him that's why he's laughing <laughs> so um <laughs> so I've gone up and Viv's are like, what's the matter? What's the matter, Jay? I said, I've just been touched and my hand is still in the class position. Yeah. And I said, Look, feel my hand, it's really cold. Dan's heard it in the tea room. And um <laughs> he said, as we've gone back, he said to Viv, Oh, we didn't come out because we thought Jay was hurt or whatever. I can't remember I can't remember what he said. I'll tell He's you like, what. No, nah, we, we'll just leave him. We'll leave him be. You be all right. screamed. Sorry. Ah, like that. I was like, "How's Scooby Doo?" Viv was pissing <laughs> herself, and the girl said, "Should we go out and make sure he's all right?" And I said, "Don't worry." I said, "He's absolutely fine. He's probably hurt himself because I can hear Viv pissing herself." <laughs> That's it. Yeah. <laughs> so what happens from my point of view is, Jay screamed and jumped and sort of stumbled back. It was the way it happened was funny, but shocking at the same time. Mm. When I get nervous, I laugh. But it was not just a nervous laugh. It was Jay's face. It just cracked me up. I don't know what happened. I was supposed to have been scared, but Jay's face just made me laugh. It was and funny. it wasn't just a little laugh. It was a roar. And then when I calmed myself down, Jay, what's happened? And he was telling me, I'm looking at him in his face. He's panicking. I'm still laughing. <laughs> <laughs> it was scary but funny at the same it was, time yeah but that's the first time i've been properly touched um so that's happened so we've gone back out of coffee or whatever so when the time was time to come to lock up me and who was that i can't remember that fellow was chris howley. that's yeah, it chris, yeah um chris me and chris went round to lock up and where i got touched there was the stairway going down into the cellar he had to lock that up and then we looked to where the hallway was and the doorway and that and then we saw that we saw that little boy run from it being right to left um and chris said to me did you see that i said yeah i'm just wondering if you saw it just to clarify that it was something there and he said yeah it was it was a little boy um 
but yeah, that was that was is that kind your of. Most, is that your most favourite place to investigate at the minute? No, it was the Sunday night as well when we went to um, we went to the Ram Inn. That was good. Um, I had another experience there, um, which I can't really explain. Well, I can because I started filling on that night. So there's a room called the Bishop's Room. Um, uh, me and Viv did a, a we did a Estes. So what? Estes experiment. That's it. So we did that. Um, first off, we've so we've got here uh, two. Uh, what are they called? Help me out. Headphones. In. Headphones. <laughs> Headphones in both ears, but using the same device. Um, so we're doing that, and we we haven't been doing it that long, and heard someone in my ear go go away and I, I that was it i jumped off that bed i don't know dan was t- doing the video laughing like he was creasing up and i said like, i'm not doing this because i've just told i just told them what happened and they're like no 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 jay you'll be all right you'll be all right it's you know it is what it is kind of thing so we sat back down did the experiment and we were like five six minutes in and viv felt something on the bed and then it shuffled up to me and sat down. And I'm like, I was trying to like figure out if that was you sitting down or if that was someone else next to me. And we both got up and I was like, no, nah, I'm not doing that. I've just uh, started, started filling my pants up. <laughs> and um, <laughs> But that was probably, and then we was in, the, we did another experiment. So Viv left her phone in the other room, like at the front of the pub. And then, or the house, and then we was in the kitchen. Um, so I phoned Viv's phone, or vice versa, and we was talking like you would, like phoning, like when you're on the phone. And um, we got quite a good response. Uh, so we was talking to the phone as someone was on the call, and then we got no, what, what do you want? No, they were the four things that we got, and I, I well, I've, if I can get the if I can get the clip, then I'll share it. But I'd have to ask someone else if we can. Yeah. But um, we got a good response for that, and yeah, I think that was the best. That was the best. So the two, the two combined. The two combined. Yeah, the two. Yeah, so with Winchester Mansion and the Ram Inn, I think that was you know them two ticks off weekend. my um, bucket list. Great weekend that was. You know, I'd still, I'd, I think, if if it was the summer, then we'd go back in the summer. Oh, we're doing them both in the summer. Yeah, yeah. So, I think they were the best, the best at the moment I've done. That was just I can't explain. It was really good. Well, guys, if you want to hear mine, I've got yeah, go. two. Well, I've actually got three, so I'll run through. We've got them no quickly. questions. We were with with you. We were with you. We were there. We got any questions, Eric? No, I don't got any questions. What about you, Davey Bollocks? Bollocks. Leave her alone. Uh, No, that's fine. It sounds that little asshole wants to stop the truth. So, how many many times did you actually push your pants? <laughs> um, probably through the two, the two nights, probably about twenty-five. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what, this is what makes you feel like you like what scares you about that that you you know react that way easily. Um, I wasn't. I think it's quite a good question because I wasn't scared. Mm-hmm. Uh, 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 that, come, right, with okay, me, right. come with me I'll take that I was I was scared but it was a good scare if you know what I mean Yeah. because I've never had that experience on a ghost hunt where physically being um, touched and my hand was still in the clasp position as I was going to shake your hand mm. um, it was dead cold as well so that's never happened to me um, and the situation when we sat on the bed as well, that? where you um, what's that say? Short ass is good. What did that say? Brilliant. 
You just wait until I see you, Ginge. My guilty conscience. So, um, so yeah, it was uh, just the experience that it was only me and Viv on the bed, and then we felt a third person. So that I think that was I didn't because didn't explain it. It was only two of us on the same side of the bed. So we was on the left hand side, and it happened on the right hand side. Um, but you could physically feel the bed like properly go down mm. so i think that was it was it was a good scare but it wasn't it was kind of a bit of a shock of a scare of it as well oh, that's what it is and it? it's a shock and you're not expecting yeah, it yeah. yeah i wasn't frightened but it was just the fact that I, we knew where where we were going um so i wasn't open anyway um but um but yeah it was it was quite it was really good i really enjoyed it yeah, it was good. Uh, well, it was Jay, you're not alone in a really bad scare because there is a place close to me that I cannot mention. And Dan and I went there because in its a church, it has a history that goes back to Tudor times. Is this the one F off, Dan? Yes. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. And it was the first time ever in my life I went, bearing in mind, I've been investigating as a paranormal investigator, hobbyist, ghost hunter, whatever you want to call it, for over 30 years. I've been doing mediumship for a good 45 years. <coughs> and so none of this should have shocked me. I should have been more prepared. But I wasn't that night for what I thought. It was frightening. It was exhilarating at the same time. But because we didn't know what it was, which gave the scare factor... And the fact there was four of them. And hmm. the only way I can describe it is they look like the Dementors from Harry Potter. Oh, wow. And I saw them during the day and they were very raggedy, moving very quickly, and they were grey in colour. And when I told Dan I'd seen this thing, he said, oh, it's just your eyes, it's the sunlight, you know, the sun's going down and, oh, don't worry about it. And I'm thinking, oh, I'm getting that uneasy feeling. It came so close to me, I could have touched it. It's only there for a split second because it moved so quick. And then when Dan saw one, mm -hmm. that was it. All hell broke loose because it was dark then. And then in the darkness, you saw them as black things. But they were hovering right. and they moved oh. so fast. I saw one and Viv went, oh, I've seen this thing. And my automatic thing was, we've been looking at a camera, uh, the light on the back of the camera. It's dark. And then you look up and your eyes are all like this. So you you try your eyes are trying to acclimatise themselves from looking at a bright light to looking at a dark sort of foreground. Yeah. So I thought I'll practice just that. But then this thing zipped right past and I thought, hang on. That that's not what I think. That weren't what I light. saw, yeah. And then we saw cut about three I saw three, I think you saw four, didn't you? Four, yeah. But, and it's unnerving yeah. because you don't know what they are. And call silly bollocks over there. Do you want to come closer <laughs> and talk to us? No, me, keep them over him. there. Let them stay him. over there. <laughs> come closer and touch me. I think, no, the older I, I think the older I've got, the less concerned I am. I think I'm, no. my nerves are a lot steadier the older I've got and the more I've, mm. I think it's just case. I don't know why. I don't know but why. This place. It's just... this place. It's a nice-looking, peaceful beautiful. church it's beautiful. A, in a beautiful village. It has a wax effigy of one of the deceased in, in the church with one of her own wigs and dresses on. Um, it's it's very, very beautiful. And you would not think that it would have a haunting like it has. Was it because we disturbed something? Who knows? But, again, we've been back over a couple of period times. We are going to go back on the exact day that that happened to see if it will come back again. That'd be interesting. Uh, but um, it's something that Dan and I have researched over a period of time. So this thing, these things had seen us before but hadn't presented themselves. But to see that, and we both saw them, that's something else. But that's not, the, that's not my favourite place. My favourite place near to me where I investigate and have done it over a period of five, six years, maybe even longer, is Castle Rising. Mm. 
I made a very, very good friend in Norman Farhi, God rest his soul, who yeah, was the curator, curator of, Norman, of Castle Rising. I had been there at all different seasons, all different times of the day and night. I have seen so much. I have captured so much. Full apparition, down even to um, having a little bit of a naughty experience with the elemental there. I had seen stuff with my own eyes, even skeptics. I had taken skeptics and they had seen stuff. To hear the history, the history is quite colourful because you have, um, oh God, what was her name? Um, the lady that um, haunts Castle Rising. Oh, she's on to Oh, the white, uh, the, the, she's, oh, the white she's lady. Known as, she's known white as the Queen. Wolf Queen. Oh, known yeah. as the Wolf Queen. Uh, and she was married to a king who supposedly had this bad death, but he didn't. Um, the actual castle itself is not a castle. It's actually a fortified house. Uh, it's built on ley lines. Was she it has Lady two... Isabella or something? Queen Isabella. Queen Isabella. She was a queen. She was a queen. Oh, um, been it... killed, didn't he? On battle or something. Yeah. That's when yeah. she found out that he'd been killed, didn't she? She had, uh, that castle's got two, uh, two. Um, it ha would have had internal chapels, but it also has two external um, chapels or churches, or whatever you want to call them, on the ground. It's got ley lines, it's got history, and it even has a saint attributed to it, Saint Felix. So this thing goes way, way, way back in history. I think it. I think it's the eleventh century or something. It goes back to Dan. It's really yeah, old, right, yeah, over, over a thousand, thousand years, years yeah. old. Um, and it's because I know it so well. I have fond memories of my my dear, dearly departed friend Norman. And by the way, if I know she's not watching, but. I've got to say happy birthday to Ina today. It's her birthday. Oh, today. Happy, so birthday happy, Ina. happy birthday, Ina. Happy birthday, Ina. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Ina. So um, that <laughs> is my most favourite place, and it is quite close to me, but even closer to, the, well, it's not close, I suppose it's the same distance, is a, an old asylum called, I'm, actually, I shouldn't mention it. So there is an asylum that I've been to. It's an old hospital. It's very old. It's built on a par with another mental asylum in England, which is down south in Essex. It's a mirrored image of each other. And it had been used. Um, it's very, very old. A lot of people have died in there. They did use electric shock treatments. Even up until the early 80s, when people were still housed in a mental facility in there, uh, and I was party to one of the train said train drivers that did it, that somebody was released from the the mental hospital itself. They walked out of the mental hospital with their bags, went to the train tracks and threw themselves in front of a train. Now, this was still happening 80s and 90s. And one of the train drivers that I happened to talk to, he spoke about hitting one of the women that threw herself in front of the train. So it was quite raw, and I thought, well, I need to go and investigate this place, and I did. And stupidly enough, I took my friends, off we went, in there, not knowing anything. Big, bad, brave Viv. I got <laughs> this lovely voice recorder, put her earphones in, I thought, she's going to listen real time, see if she can get anything. And I was in the centre of this this hospital. There's no getting out of it pretty quickly. Mm. Okay, it would take you a good five minutes to run, find a door, and get outside. I stood on a corner <laughs> where there was a doorway, but there was no floor. So it would have been a corridor, but there was no floor. I'm sitting there listening. I'm going footsteps. I can hear footsteps. And I could hear the footsteps of a woman in heels, maybe a nurse clip clock, clip clock, coming down this corridor with no floor. And I'm talking to my friend here, I'm getting these footsteps, I'm recording, it's brilliant, you know. Then all of a sudden, these footsteps were right on top of me. Luckily, my my earphone saved my voice recorder. I legged it because she got too close. So since that day, I will never listen to anything live like that because if it's something that unnerves me or gets too close, I wouldn't want to go any further. It would just interrupt it. So I'd rather be blind. 
We then found a room where they did the electric shock treatments. We had the big old things on the wall that they would have rigged their machines up to and all the rest of it. <clears throat> we got inside and we thought we'd be brave, turn all our lights off okay, and call out. There was me taking photographs on a camera. No, no flash, just taking pictures in the darkness. My mates were calling out, being quite rude and all the rest of it because how dare you treat the patients like that, you know, lobotomies and all the rest of it. And it was only when I got home and I lightened the photographs, I was disgusted with what I, I captured. It was a full face right up in the lens, snarling at me. You saw his glasses, his jowly face, his dark hair, as clear as day in, in this image. And not one of us, it didn't represent anyone. We were like four women and one man. One man. And the man that was with us did not look like and he didn't even wear glasses. So to get that in this room and later on, they were saying that they could hear growlings and sn snarls and all that sort of thing. And I just wondered if it was this doctor because we were calling them off. out mm -hmm. and okay. we pissed them off. I mean, we had a really, really horrible time in there. Um, we found the children's ward for all the orphan children. Um, we found the morgue. We found the reception. The reception was beautiful. We found the church. Uh, but when we got into these wings of the hospital that we really should have had a bit more respect for, because we were, the, some of them were quite young and naive that came with us, and they just wanted to give it all that. <laughs> we did ask for it, and it did happen. But it's like how we couldn't deal with it at the time. We left there in a hurry that night because um, we had things thrown at us. Um, we could hear hissing noises we it, it really did our nervous when when the rocks gr grew quite big and were being smashed against the walls it was then time to leave so yeah no we, we've learned since then since then we've come a long way and we've learned um but if anyone does get out of hand like that around me in places like that i will take myself out of the scenario i won't sit there and hope that they calm down mm -hmm. i will just walk next time because mm -hmm. yeah. i've been there yeah done that experienced it and i know what can result as a as a yeah, yeah just, just don't go mm -hmm. there but no no they're my, they're my places so see just know. sitting here thinking like listening to us all like listening obviously everybody <laughs> that spoke um <clears throat> I, I i don't know why but it's coming to my head about ley lines i'm thinking is it ley lines that might be triggering like thinking about obviously the scenario where I had like we investigated three places in the same place that were reporting identical, and it turned out it was ley lines there yeah. that was causing <coughs> the domino effect, as I call it. They say some churches are built on the older churches, the pagan, this on pagan sites with ley lines, yep. don't they, Dan? Yeah, them. I think for me, I, I'll be honest with you. I think things like ley lines are a bit. I'm not. I'm not too sure about them. The whole energy. Yeah, energy lines. I'm not too sure about that. To be honest with you, it's a bit. I've gone. It's the whole crystal thing. I'm not too sure of them either. To be honest with you. I'll give you a crystal, Dan. <laughs> I, I, I don't. I think the only. We need to work with lava. Beautiful. They're beautiful, but mm. I don't hold any. Lava, lava, lava. <clears throat> you can touch it. Right, we got some things in the chat. <laughs> hey, hey. Good one, Bill. Yeah. Cool, Bobby. I'll be interested. Uh, I'll be interested. I'll PM you with dates. Yeah, you do. Oh, he's, talking about, Bill. he's talking about Jamie. <laughs> he's ghosting us. He is. <laughs> he left to do this on a cliffhanger. Yes. <laughs> Can I ask, is Nick all right after the tornadoes? Has anybody spoken to Nick? Yeah, I, I've, I've been in contact with Nick and things networking. That. I'll need to drop him a message. But for the sounds of it, um, wait a minute. The last message that I got from him was today. Um, he was saying that there's more tornadoes, I think. I read the message oh, properly. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but I'm, all, I'm always checking on him. I've got to say that boy always amazes me because I told him not to come 
on the show on Friday and to concentrate on what was happening. I said, please yeah. don't come on. Just stay off. Just take care of yourself. Don't worry about the show. The show will always be there. Next thing you know, Nick appears and I'm like, I'm going to stick this in your eye, boy. <laughs> um, <laughs> Can you take the camera outside so we can see what's happening? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, um, he just told. said, he just said, just want to let everyone know um, that they've once again called for severe weather for our area later tonight. Wow. Possibly large hail and tornadoes, of course. I'm not sure how things will look for us later this evening, but I'll keep everyone updated as we approach the evening hours. Um, that was at two o'clock today, but there's been nothing else. So I'll just drop him a message and yeah. hope, hope, hope for the best. Wish him well from us, won't you? Um, yeah. No. I will do. Does he actually um, I don't, I'm not sure. The way that Nick's described it to me, I think he lives in... Um, how would you describe it? Um, it's not like, like, like a bungalow-type place. Like a cul-de-sac like sort of thing. That's a Yep. Uh huh. Um, but I'll send his love please or message him just now. Yeah. Everyone, and, and Eric, is... Eric, do you get tornadoes and stuff yep. where you are as well? Well, we're not that far away from Nick, so yeah. No, you're to... not. Right. <laughs> oh my god! Fifty hour a mile winds. Uh, I think the other day it was sixty five miles an hour, and it literally blew wow. sliding off of my house. <laughs> wow. Yep. Well, just stay safe, safe, and keep both of you um, safe and the cats. Have you got storms? Have you got a storm cellar there, Eric, or not? Yeah, we get storms over here. Have you got a storm got cellar, a cellar. at your house? Um, no, we got a um, we got a basement we can go to, but I usually don't go down there during a tornado. So, no, no, I don't blame you. I'd be too busy to chase that. I must admit, I just I love the thought of it. Okay, well, I've got to watch TV. I'll be around. That's fine, Bobby. I'll, I'll say, I said Bobby this time, not Booby, because the last time I did that last week. Bobby, just give her a mouthful when you go on. Just call her Ginger. Why did you Ginger? Hi, Bri. Hi, Bri. Has anyone ever got spirits of Henry VIII or his six wives? Nope. We nah. did get a... We did, we did sort of pick up on... We, we there was a bit of a backstory relating to one of Henry VIII's. Um, it was of his uh, in what do you call it the internal court. That Sir, uh, what was his name? Thomas. Can you remember Dan? Thomas the Beckett. No, you know when we we saw those nasty dementors. The, oh, the, Thomas. The la- what to do with Henry VIII? You mean? Yeah, I'm, it all goes not back. Thomas, the, not Thomas More. Face. The lineage, the lineage oh. of the lady involved in oh, the church um, thing goes back to the Henry VIII's court. Okay. So it was a title. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bestowed. I can't. Yeah, I know. Stop. Yeah, I, I can't think of the name. It was a Stop. Sir somebody, Sir Thomas somebody, and he was that was bestowed on him by Henry VIII. He was given all the estate, including this church. Um, they then used to work in the court of Thomas of Henry VIII. And then that lineage, that Sir, whatever he was called, yes. goes back, and it, it it's and the lineage actually stops with this woman that's still alive today. Um, yeah, that's right. But yeah. that's about the closest we've ever got to it. She's the last one by name, isn't she? Yeah, yeah. The title goes then afterwards with her. Yeah, <laughs> I think it goes to the grandchildren. They have a different name, aren't they? But they've changed to so take the title though. They have to change their name to their ancestral name. Yeah, it's weird. I suppose you keep the bloodline. Yeah, I mean. Oh, hi, Algazimas. Uh, was it no? Hi, Algazimas. That's thank you, isn't it? Irene Takora in Japan. I don't know. What are you I don't know. I've learned. I've learned about Chinese, by the way, but I, guess, well, I don't think it's appropriate for the show. But I've learned. Uh, I flight through TikTok. And there's always this Chinese woman that comes up and she teaches you, you how to work. Japanese. You need to learn Japanese because Irene's from Japan. Not, yeah, you don't know they're not the same people, don't you? It's, um, different Chi- it's different Chinese and Japanese, love. Mm. Know, yes, I know you're dumb, but they're totally different. You know that, don't you? 
I don't do that, you I mean, asshole. I mean, you didn't know, did you? Now you're trying to backtrack and save yourself both. Oh, right, okay. They, I'll, I'll just go, okay, just bow down to you as men, pity bastard. Just tell, just tell Irene, Aragato, no, Aragato Gazimus. In fact, I can use it. Domo Aragato. Oh, there you go. There we go. Woohoo. Eric's getting all masterful there. I don't know how to speak Japanese or Chinese, but I know I do know the difference between the nationalities. Gunkai <laughs> means fuck off in Chinese. <laughs> And Lois, you would be the one that would know that. Yes, yes you would. You would. <laughs> As you said, you had me cracked up the other night when you turned around and says I've got a face say an angel, but a mouth like a sailor. <laughs> oh, thanks, Wendy. Oh, yeah, we were looking at um, Rolling Hills and stuff. Yeah, that's an amazing place, isn't it? Rolling Hills Island. I hope you're talking about one of that one. I've seen a few English paranormal groups go, so... And was so haunted. Oh, excellent. Mm. Keep an eye over that. Oh, touch. The birds the bu use ley yeah. lines. Did you know that, Dan? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sold on ley lines. I do, I do, they, they use a certain navigation, don't they, because of their brain. But that's just to do with, um, that's just to do with compass. It's nothing to do with ley lines. Nick stays in a furniture store. I hope it's I not. Um, I hope it's not IKEA because that Swedish shit's it's not very good. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh dear. Wolseley, Cardinal Wolseley. Wolseley, yeah, no, it wasn't. Well, it. He's supposed to haunt a couple of pubs. Um, it used to be his dwellings up by Hampton Court. I can tell you about Cardinal Wolseley. Actually, I won't. I'll keep it quiet for me and Dan. Thank <laughs> you. And me, because I want to go. <laughs> you have to get your ass over here, Rick. Thomas More, yeah. I know. I plan on, I plan on spending them, well, obviously the first month I'm in Edinburgh because I have to do my stuff there. But the rest of the time I have there, I'm going to spend some time in England, Ireland, Good. Scotland. <laughs> you need about two years over here then. Anyway, you, can do, Wendy. You, you do what you want. Me and Rita are going to go. Well, she can stay with me. We'll just go shop and do what we I need to do. <laughs> so, what we haven't done, guys. What haven't we done, Dan? Job of doom. Oh, of doom. Lois, are you picking tonight? Uh, I'll get to that arsehole down there with the Liverpool outfit, shorty. Short after. Well, I'm I'm working nights next week, so I won't be on. So hopefully it screws you up. Okay. <laughs> Tell me where to stop. Stop. Right. Okay. One, two, four, three. Oh, three. Number three. See, see if it's a bad one. I might kick him in the nuts. <laughs> <laughs> you might kick him. You might kick him in the nuts anyway. Giggles. Giggles. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now, I you, even, who thought of that one? That's quite a good one. Who thought of that? Because Me. people think, oh, these ghosts are well behaved and all that sort of thing. But um, they're now in spirit world where they don't have to be, you know, frightened of being arrested or, you know thrown in prison for be just for being who they are or they just be themselves so gay we're going to be talking about gay ghosts next oh, week awesome. you better do some research oh, oh, I know. Well, wait, wait, if we were talking about if we we're talking about gay the... ghosts i think parker would pass qualify for that I'll tell you what, <laughs> i've still got some marks on my ass from gay ghosts so yeah I won't be here. I'm working. I'm doing the night. I'm doing my nights next week. So, uh, Eric, Eric's looking rather sort of. Oh my god! Does yeah. these things absolutely exist? Do they exist in America? You need to find yeah, out. Yeah, they do. They're Any everywhere. Well, look that They're up. Just people, aren't they? <laughs> Let's grab it by the balls and swing it as always. 
<laughs> this is a big so words, is she? <laughs> so that's what we're talking about next week, guys. Gay Ghosts. I hope you can join us for that. Tomorrow Yay. night, Dan and I are going to be joined by our Dutch connection. That is yes. Willie, Mary Williamson. Mm. Uh, we will be interviewing her and speaking to her about all things Dutch. Love Mary. And what's happening over there. And she Lovely. lives in a very historic town. So we'll be probing her about that tomorrow. And then on Thursday, you have To the Grave and Back Again with Lois yep. and Gang. Me. Yep. And then well, Friday, we don't. Oi. What are you talking about on Thursday? What is the your subject? Thursday will do. Sorry, she's a wanker. Um, <laughs> what am I talking about Thursday? Uh, talking about serial yes. killers, where the, where the term serial killers came from, and um, the missing legends on Friday. Friday is not going ahead because it's been moved to the Saturday because we have David Deans from the Unseen Realm. So I am so oh, looking forward to that one. So I don't know if his partner Dustin will be there, the guy that goes as well. So we'll need to wait and see. So, But I'm just so excited about having David because I've got a lot of time for David and I love his posts, especially on a Friday. Is he a podcaster? We- no, he, he, what, what he does is um, him and his like this guy goes out and investigates and things like that, but he doesn't do like any podcasts. Um, he's he also he's every Friday he's all he's like Nick. He puts on a positive post, and it's just one of the ones that you just you love. <laughs> yeah, cool. So on Saturday night as well, just before your special, uh, I think William Becker will be going live. It's the first Saturday of the month. I am not sure who his guest will be. That will be at UK time at 10 o'clock on Simply Spooky. But if you can't wait for all of that, you have shows on the Things Network that you can watch. There's boo. The boo. <laughs> <No>. uh, <laughs> Jeremy, he works over as a hard blessing. And uh, we love Jeremy with all our heart. He's an, an amazing guy. He's uh, coming through his surgeries and he's now seeing the light at the un- end of the tunnel, quite literally, because his patch has now been removed. Yippee! I think what, he's one tough man. Yeah. Yeah, he's a tough man, definitely. Tough man. So maybe we should get hold of Jeremy, to, uh, Dan, and uh, interview him. Yeah, let's go to Jeremy. Jeremy's a That will be nice. our special. Jeremy's <laughs> lovely. Jeremy's lovely. Uh, so... We are going to end it here. Um, I want each and every one, one of you give some uh, words of wisdom to all our people in the chat, if you don't mind, before you go. Dad? Don't hang around with loose women. <laughs> Parker? No. Just, be safe. Just uh, look out for each other, look after each other, love each other, be kind. But be kind. Yes, Lois. <laughs> well, yeah. well, Lois, don't hang about with two wallopers. No call, you know, no pointing any fingers below with the two anchors. But be kind. <laughs> Parker? <laughs> Just be safe. Take care of the people that live in America and have got the tornadoes. And yeah. Yep, definitely. All right. Eric? Even though you might not think so, there's always somebody out there that cares about you. That's true. Yes. And for those that are on their own and that are scared and frightened at the moment, please reach out to somebody, anybody. If you need to offload and you can't, uh, don't feel that you're on your own. Um, there is always somebody at the end of, the, of of a phone line. Reach out to us if you have to on Simply Spooky. We will not judge. We can always be an ear if you want to listen. So please, 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 when things get very bad and you are alone and, and depressed and you want to speak to somebody a stranger even just to listen please please reach out don't suffer in silence and on your own no, don't. okay know that that there's always somebody there we're there lois is there parker is there dan if you must yeah, <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't bother coming. yeah come let's, on, let's, 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 let's my fucking soft story 
everything was been great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just one no. more thing before we go, if I may. Lois needs more than one Kit Kat because four fingers is never enough. <laughs> <laughs> If you're ever looking, if you're only, if you if you're ever bored and lonely and looking for two recheck, the two below will be qualified enough for yes. Chinese, Japanese, Chinese, Japanese, Chinese. <laughs> How much? Don't care, motherfucker. Chinese, Japanese, Chinese, Japanese, Chinese. Oh God. Eric, I think we're in trouble here. Let's end this. Let's end this thing, shall we? Aye. Bastards! <laughs> Fucking bastards! <laughs> <laughs> Take care, everyone. Really. Until next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.